So good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to our side event this morning, the first of the last day of this event. So we're very happy that you could join us and that you took the time this early morning on this last day. So uh, our title is Encouraging Involvement of Young People in Community Development and Entrepreneurship to Counter the Abuse of Narcotic Drugs and Other Criminal Activities. And first off, I would like to welcome Dr. Maria Rio. She's our director of Women's Federation UN team in Vienna. And the floor is yours, Mrs. Maria. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome everybody in person here with us and also online. We are living in special time when we can meet in person and we also can send spread our ideas with the others, connecting with the technology. I greet you from the bottom of my heart in the name of the Women's Federation for World Peace International. Our aims are strengthening the families and bringing the view of the women on the same level as the view of men and working together like parents. We, can, we believe that we can make this world beautiful and safe for everybody, for our children. Even our title is encouraging involvement of young people in community development. But in community, there are many generations. They are parents, grandparents, and even young people. So we, in, we, our desire is to work together, that generation can work together, and then we can develop common base for every culture and for every people. And our journey on this earth starts in the family. We all independent of the color of the skin are born from the womb of a mother. So our founder, Dr. Hak Chahan Umun, also encouraged us very much that the problem of our days cannot be solved only with the power, powerful uh, tools. We need love and compassion and understanding. We need to listen to each other. And so we can make a space that everybody can feel nice and embraced and nurtured. So this is our, in short words, is our desire to share with you. Nice project, especially in African countries. So in this situation, I am very happy to welcome Mrs. Ambassador from Kenya. She re represents a very huge country in Africa, and she has lots of professional experiences, especially in banking system. I was so surprised and so touched because somehow women, we are, we are not so on the top, top level in the banking system. So congratulations, and we are happy that you are with us in Vienna and in Austria. And then we can learn because also I feel like all the, all the, uh, activities if young people uh, have also some financial foundation for their work so they can nurture they can feel independent and powerful and even the the uh, household is the is also our cradle when mother and father <laughs> learn to to deal with the money they have and they need to plan for one month and even for longer so thank you very much to joining us Mrs. Mary Wangui Mukwanja, uh, she studied in, in Stadmon University and holds bachelor degree in leadership and management, double major in public administration and NPO management, and obtained certificate in leadership and management from the same institution. And yeah, thank you very, very much. You have very, very nice. You can, everybody can read all her, all her accomplishments. accomplishments. <laughs> and uh, like mothers, we are always, we can understand each other and admire each other. And I am happy that we are so different and we have the same desire to work together for peace and for understanding. So thank you very much. And the floor is yours, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Madam Director, for the very kind introduction. I feel greatly honored 
to be part of uh, this team today. And I'm happy that I'm also joined by a very large delegation from Kenya. I think the whole of that line, uh, the whole of it, even the ones who are not from Kenya, you're welcome to Kenya. And we are glad to be here this morning. Uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, and to thank Madam Director for the invitation to participate in today's event, and especially to discuss this very important topic on youth and drugs and their empowerment. At the onset, allow me to thank the organizers uh, for pulling together the distinguished participants who I trust will be in a position to give us invaluable support uh, to our discussions. Additionally, I wish to commend the Women Federation for Peace International for their work in encouraging and the involvement of the youth in community development and entrepreneurship. Our future is dependent on the youth. Therefore, it is our responsibility to mentor and guide them properly so that they can succeed and we can have a sustainable future. Distinguished delegates, the involvement of the young people in the community development and entrepreneurship cannot be gainsaid, particularly for the African continent. As you're aware, Africa has the youngest population, hence the youth are a key resource to the continent's socioeconomic development. In Kenya, over 80% of the population is aged 35 years and below. Please note, 80%. Coupled with the challenge of alcohol and drugs, the youth in our country are faced with a myriad of challenges, including high levels of unemployment, peer pressure, violence, inadequate resources for self-reliance and development, inadequate social support system, as well as poor parenting. In addressing these challenges, my government is striving to strengthen entrepreneurship ecosystems and improve accessibility of services to the youth among, uh, to, to among other issues address the high level of um, unemployment and related events or effects. Some of the in initiatives put in place include encouraging innovation among us, the youth in order to build their creativity, increase their knowledge and broaden their skill sets. This has been instrumental in encouraging the youth to not only build their own businesses, but also to provide, uh, to provoke their social change. To enhance the youth access to funds for entrepreneurship, We've set up various funds where the youth can apply for loans on incremental basis. Examples of these funds are Youth Entrepreneurship Fund, Hustler Fund, and the Women Enterprise Funds. The latter supports young and elderly women to access funds for entrepreneurship services. I know Director is smiling when she hears of the youth. Instituted legal and policy initiatives to support uh, youth development. For instance, the government in 2013 established their access to government procurement of opportunities. The objective of the program is to empower and facilitate the enterprises owned by women, youth, and people living with disabilities to be able to participate in government procurement opportunities. To, rea to realize this objective, government ministries, departments, and agencies are required to reserve 30% of government procurement opportunities to enterprises owned by these groups. To build the youth skill set, the government has set up various in institutions such as the National Youth Service and Technical and Vocational Education Training Institutions that are widely spread 
in the country uh, to enable them participate and contribute to national development. We've also initiated many projects such as the Kenya Youth Employment um, and Opportunities uh, Project implemented by the National Industrial Training Authority in collaboration with the World Bank to reverse high youth unemployment rates in urban and rural areas by equipping uh, youth with skills and work experience sought by employers. By engaging the employers, the project aims to implement training and internships in both the formal and informal sectors and improve quality and efficiency in traditional apprenticeships. In acknowledging their unique nature and acknowledging clean fun, the government creates platforms where the youth, uh, the young people can be heard even as they participate. In the recent past, the cabinet secretary for sports has nominated media personalities and celebrities to creative technical committee. This committee's purpose is to establish reliable system for the seamless and accountable collection and uh, distribution of loyalties of all creatives and implementation frameworks for the national creative economic e economy plan. In addition, the government is encouraging the youth in key community roles uh, that were previously held by the elderly. We have recently appointed cabinet secretaries cabinet uh, administrative secretaries and principal secretaries and other high officials that are youthful, hence providing a ray of hope to many youth that they can too play a critical role in the leadership of the country. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, as we are discussing this on the sideline of the 66th Commission on the Narcotics Drug, allow me to enumerate what the government of Kenya is doing, educating the youth on alcohol and drug abuse, a hindrance to youth participation and contribution to the well being of other communities. In partnership with the Ministry of Education, the National Authority for Campaign Against Alcohol and Drug Abuse, that's NACADA, developed the national guidelines for alcohol and substance use. Uh, prevention and management in basic learning institutions um, to, among others, address individual vulnerabilities to drugs abuse and assist school administration respond to drug use platforms in the institutions. As part of the school program, NACADA has developed age appropriate formulation and communication materials for use by various age groups, that is six to eight years, nine to 12, 13 to 15, 16 to 18, as well as teachers and parents. Integrate alcohol and drug use prevention components in the competent-based curricula and implementation of life skills training program targeting pupils in primary school. Alongside this, NACADA is reaching out to the youth out of the schools through training programs and supporting activities. In addition, they have intensified the campaign through the various social uh, media channels with majority of youths can be rich. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close, I wish to confirm that my government is ready to engage with relevant stakeholders in advancing and involvement of the youth in the community development and entrepreneurship. We encourage partnership in this regard to realize a brighter future for a younger generation. Thank you once again for allowing us to join this discussion and I look forward to a const uh, constructive deliberation during this event and sorry for taking so much of the time. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Ambassador. Uh, thank you so much for your presence and for your words and all your country, your government is doing um, to encourage the youth and to uh, prevent the abuse of uh, narcotic drugs and alcohol. So thank you so much uh, for your introductory words. And before we will uh, introduce the further speakers, also a very warm welcome from Korea. Uh, our, co our founder is greeting you all with encouragement for this event. 
and this is Moon. We call her also sometimes Mother Moon because she is also a great example to um, helping the world as well, aside of her bigger family. So uh, continuously, um, despite her 80 years old, so a very warm welcome also from our founders. And here with, I would like to introduce our first speaker for today, uh, Mr. Billy Batwara. Thank you so much for joining us from the UNODC Civil Society Unit, unit and you will be speaking on strengthening the resilience of youth leaders to counter drugs and crime. Thank you so much and the floor is yours. Thank you so much for, for your kind introduction and uh, Madam Ambassador, thank you so much for your kind words as well. Um, dear friends and, and colleagues, I really would like, first of all, to thank the organizers uh, Women's Federation for World Peace International and other co-organizers of this side event. Um, and uh, so, of course, uh, some of you who already know me, you know that I really like quotes. And there's a reason why I like quotes. And uh, one of the people that I like quoting quite a lot is a former Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Kofi Annan. Um, and in the context of this uh, side event, um, I, I found one quote that I thought it was, it's, it's really fitting to, to, to this topic. And he said once, young people should be at the forefront of global change and innovation. Empowered, they can be key agents for development and peace. And I think this is really summarized as well, um, the context in which we are uh, discussing today. So how can we strengthen the resilience of youth leaders to counter drugs and crime. Where I think really for me, the starting point is to recognize the role that young people play as key agents in building more inclusive, sustainable and effective peace. There is a growing evidence of their positive impact when engaging in peace processes, as well as to the prevention of all forms of violence and crimes. And I think this is very key, especially because of the focus of this side event on the African continent. I think talking about peace and conflict in the context of um, building resilience of young people on drugs and crime is very key. Therefore, strengthening the resilience of youth leadership to counter drugs and crime requires us to support their constructive roles of young people, their constructive roles in peace efforts, which will allow countries to harness their contributions in the present and in the future. Youth make special contributions to peace building, such as engaging their peers. And it's very important to bring this, the young people who have been uh, through various programs, such as what NACADA does, for example. Uh, we heard a number of other organizations yesterday, such as CADCA in the US. And those young people come back to be the agents and voices for their peers. Working at community level, sustaining dialogues, when other, others have, have lost hope and bridging divides in polarizing context. Additionally, youth engage in building peace. They learn to value it. When youth engage in, in, in building peace, they learn to value it. They learn civic, civic skills and often they keep working to sustain peace through their lifetime. So, and it is really against this backdrop and understanding that they, uh, for the United Nations, engaging and working with youth is not an option. It is a priority for us. And through the United Nations Youth Peace and Security Agenda, which was uh, um, adopted through resolution 2250 in 2015, young people's participation is recognized as, key, as a key dimension of building, peace and of building and sustaining peace and security for all. And the resolution really identifies five key pillars um, uh, that are very important for youth participation. And the first one is youth participation. Um, and here, um, youth are taken as, um, uh, their views are taken into account in decision-making. And we have seen, again, through the CND, those who were here have seen um, uh, the, the statement that young people uh, delivered, I think it was a day before yesterday. Um, ensuring that young people are protected and their civilian rights are put at the forefront, making sure that uh, young people's uh, uh, preventive measures are also taken into account, and harnessing partnerships between and among young people, 
and also dis dis disengagement and reintegration, which means investing in youth and affected young people. And we heard from the ambassador what Kenya is doing uh, in order to, uh, um, to, to ensure that. So um, as a testament of that, you might also be aware that just last December, the, the UN General Assembly agreed and provided uh, the UN with the possibility to establish the UN Office on Youth for the first time. And we think this is going to be um, uh, an instrument and a mechanism to bringing the youth voices, not just the youth voices, actually to bring the youth leadership at the core of the United Nations. It's going to be the first time that someone who is under 35 years old is going to be an under secretary general. So that's quite a statement on behalf of the United Nations to bring those youth voices and leadership um, at the UN. And for UNODC, as I mentioned yesterday, we have really several initiatives um, in which we're engaging youth, including of course a youth initiative through which the youth forum takes place. The GRACE initiative, which really looks at a youth participation countering corruption. And again, here I talk specifically uh, in the context of Africa, because I think this is an intersectional issue that is very important. Um, and also we have on organized crime established youth focal points to help us understand how we can engage them in countering transnational organized crime. And I have several other points that are really prepared for this event, but I just wanted to, to share um, uh, a personal story because I have been, when you talk about youth, obviously we're looking at those who have been affected or who are being affected. Um, and I've been in that, on that part of, of the spectrum. I come from Rwanda myself. I, I left Rwanda when I was 12 years old, right after the genocide. Lived as a refugee in different refugee camps, you know, sometimes even going through illegal migration uh, systems. So I've been there in that spectrum of work. Um, and I have witnessed how when young people are enabled, and I think for us as NGOs, as United Nations, as elders, our role is to enable young people to participate and to engage and to create that platform for us. I have certainly, I, I, um, I, um, I have witnessed how that enablement has allowed me to be where I am today. And I think I can speak from experience that, that I think for, for, for youth, that's probably the most important thing that they need. They need to have the space. They need to feel that they can be enabled. They need to feel that they can be, um, uh, they can, of course, their skills can be built. But I think building the, the confidence of those young people, especially that are going through conflicts and, and various difficulties, is really key. And I think that's, that's our role that we need to play. So, um, as I mentioned, really, uh, for, for UNODC, this, this is not an option, it's a priority as well. So I'm very happy that we're having this discussion also at this particular level and, and at the CND that the, the doors are opening for young people. But I think I would like us to, I would like to see more. I think more can be done. Uh, many young people, especially from the African continent, still do not have sufficient access to these particular platforms. And we've heard also in our consultations uh, last year, that when you think about the participation in the UN system of young people, the African continent is, very, is still very far behind. And I think Ambassador, really I will appeal to US governments to continue making this point. I think it's very important that the other member states also understand this and that we as the organization also understand this, especially when also it comes to internship, unpaid internships at the UN. Um, mm -hmm. The, the issue that we find, and I have one of my interns here who is taking pictures, thank you so much. Um, and she would know that for those young people coming from Africa, from Asia, from Latin America, it's impossible for them to have this experience. So how can we make sure that that space is also created? And again, this, I think it's a role of governments to make this case. Uh, it's probably not the role of UNODC to do that. So I would really continue to appear to the ambassador and the governments as well to continue to making this case. So thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, I wish everyone um, a, a good discussion and looking forward to continue discussing with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Batwara, for your contribution. And uh, for all of you, the efforts of the UNODC to bring the youth into, uh, into the discussions and making it a priority. We appreciate that and we're trying to contribute as well. So hopefully we can also work together more and more with the governments to uh, accomplish this. 
and also all the practical factors indeed. So thank you so much. We will continue with our next speaker. Uh, she will be online. Um, it's my privilege to uh, introduce and welcome Mr. Mrs. Susan Kone. She is our International Vice President of the Women's Federation for World Peace in Africa. And she's also the president of the Women's Federation for World Peace in Kenya. So uh, she will talk about youth empowerment for peace and prosperity. And uh, Mrs. Kona, the floor is yours. Thank you very much um, for that introduction. And warm greetings from Kenya. And uh, we send our special appreciation to Her Excellency, Madam uh, Mary Wangoi Mukwaja, the ambassador of Kenya to Australia. Austria, and also I want to recognize uh, my fellow panelists, uh, distinguished guests, and all our members and supporters from all over the globe. Special thanks also for the Women Federation Vienna team for bringing us together to discuss this very important uh, topic about the youth. And I'd like to share my screen for my presentation. Uh, the topic itself is uh, is about the involvement of youth people. Sorry, I think Tony, you may have to share for me. I will stop sharing. So we're going to share her PowerPoint now. One moment, Mrs. Kona. That technical hitch. Yes, the, is, uh, the topic itself is the encouraging involvement of youth, young people in community development and entrepreneurship to counter the abuse of narcotic drugs and other criminal activities. And uh, our theme today is Youth Empowerment for Peace and Prosperity. Because the next. So youth in Africa constitutes 19% of the global youth population in 2017, and that is numbering 226 million. And the United Nations defines youth as people aged between 15 and 24 years. By 2030, it is predicted that the number of youth in Africa will increase by 42%. So that means uh, the African population is quite a young, is a young population. And there's their need for youth empowerment, which is a process where children and young people are encouraged to take charge of their lives by equipping them with life skills, which assist them to make bright choices, right choices, and teaching them universally shared values, traditions, culture, and character education. It's also important that the youth have role models and mentors to share their lives so as to be responsible citizens, future parents, and leaders. So next. So there are many challenges as the ambassador has stipulated, identity crisis, uh, abuse of narcotics, sense of hopelessness, jobless, joblessness and victims. How many of our uh, youth are also victims of wars and child soldiers recruitments, early marriages for the underage girls, victims of broken homes. And this results to involvement in crime, drug and alcohol abuse, violence, immoral lives. And, and unfortunately, it also triggers suicide among the youth, especially these days after the COVID-19. Many opt to move away from uh, Africa to look for greener pastures. These are the various uh, drugs, uh, which is, has become a menace in many, many countries. And this is retrogressive for the families, communities, and the nation. Next, please. So mit mitigation efforts in institutions and the community. Uh, we, are uh, we are encouraging the youth to do their formal education and, and also teach them character education and emphasis on the role of the family, involvement of the community and the religious uh, groups, encouragement, in, encouraging innovation and job creation, 
and also drug abuse awareness programs by all stakeholders, affordable rehabilitation services, and promote patriotism among the youth for prosperity. So the, the dual nature of education is formal education, character education, but which is the most fundamental? There is a quote from the Theodore Roosevelt, who is a former US president, to educate a man in mind and not in morals is to educate a menace to the society. And we are seeing it uh, clearly in the society now. We need character education, teach the youth about altruism, self-control, fear of mindedness, and, for, and the spirit of living for the sake of others. All these are parts of the character education that you're supposed to teach the youth and also be a good example for them. Next, please. So it promotes a pro comprehensive approach to character and personal growth, focuses on universal shared values, advocates for strengthening the family, and promotes the idea that the school has an active role to play in the information of character. It also underlines the need for the community to be involved in creating a good environment for the youth to grow well and prepare them for the future lives. Next, please. So there are three life goals. One is become a person of mature character and integrity and develop healthy and loving relationships in and out of the family, and also make a positive contribution to the society and the global community. So we, we, we teach around these uh, life goals and really emphasizing the need for family, which is like the school of love, the foundation of love in character building, and also the extended family, and especially in the African setting, the extended family is very important for the growth of our youth and the, the environment. Also, in schools, we started a pilot program, character education, in a place called Kakamega. We started uh, this in one of the schools that is sponsored by Women Federation Japan, and it has, it, has, uh, it has brought very good results, and the impact is very, very strong. We go to the next one. These are photos of the programs that we have been doing in institutions. And uh, the result is very good because they have also improved in their in their in their results. In the, the the school grades have gone up, and also themselves they have changed in terms of character. Let's go. Yeah, this is just some reports that we, the program itself started in 2011, and 80 percent of the students have really really appreciated it. Even the administration themselves in this school and others. Next. Yeah, so these are yearly programs that we do. Each and every school we do per term. We have three terms in the school, in the Kenyan system of, of education. So we make sure that we go three times uh, within the, the, the year of this school and others. Next. Yeah, next, that's just, those are the photos. We also do capacity building and also guidance and counseling. So, yeah, those are the, also in other schools in Mumias in Kenya. Let's, let's go next to the, yes, and also community. Also in the community, we are doing this character education and we have seen the impact. Some youths who are addicted to drugs changing and also being creative in their, their talents and skills and becoming completely new people. So this is also very impactful in the communities as well, not only in schools. Next. Yeah, so this is in the communities. These are photos to show some of the program, the programs that we have done. There are very many. We cannot uh, uh, project all of them. Next, next slide, please. And also, we have started uh, some clubs of martial arts for character development in the grassroots as well, where we teach them character education, which comes with discipline and, and also changing of, of lifestyle. Some of them have graduated, even become uh, masters, and also started their own clubs and health clubs. So it's really something which is very diverse and is very impactful in the community. This they also we encourage them to plant trees and also to be, uh, to be innovative, you know that they do. Especially now we have a program called Fruity Schools. Uh, and, and also it has been in, initiated by one uh, Jemo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology student, and she's doing very well in institutions. Next, please. So there are also cleanups and uh, encouraging the youth also to take care of the environment. Uh, next. And also these are brief reports about the schools. We cannot go through the reports, but they are there. If your woman wants them, we can be able to send to them later on. But it's really something which has taken place in many places in the community as well. Let's go. Next, please. So the government initiatives, it has been well stipulated by uh, High Excellency, the ambassador, 
And uh, we have also the, the facilitation of semi and unskilled labor force in the GAF, where the, our, our young ones go to look for work and, they, and they, they bring remittance and they are able to change their lives to the, and the lives of their families. And also involving the youth in uh, tree planting. Uh, the, the, there's an initiative with the president of, of 5 billion trees planting. They are, also, they are also encouraging the youth to participate in that program. And also the launching of the Hustler Fund was a blessing to the youth. It was caused, it was uh, launching the spirit of financial inclusion to those who wish to change their lives, including the youth and women as well. And also launching of the Women Enterprise Fund was a big plus for the NGOs and the institutions who are really uh, concerned about the youth. And also they are soon to be uh, launched uh, as affordable housing projects where also the youth can also own houses. And also they can work in those projects as well. So there's need to advocate for global partnership and integration, uh, multinational agencies, the government coming in, the community coming in, interpersonal partnerships. And also we need to go through the journey with these uh, young ones so that um, we can be able to move together. So next. Dr. Kona, just uh, we can allow just one more minute. Thank you so yes. much so far. Yes. Uh, so it's the journey and not a destination to, to raise funds, to raise the use for peace and prosperity, character education and formal education needs to be intertwined. And we, know, we need to start uh, with character education first. And it begins in the family. There need to be positive, uh, positive role models ourselves and to form the well-rounded characters. And as educators, parents and members, there's an urgent need to embark on a journey with the youth and children in our schools, homes and communities for them to be contributors for the well-being, peace and prosperity of our families, community, nation and the world. So for those ones who would like to, to reach out to us, next slide, it has all our contacts and that is the, the email and also the we have our Facebook page and also the, the, the numbers, the phone numbers are there. And I'd like to thank you very much for inviting us to present to, uh, to present our program and also our projects that we are doing in the community and schools. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Scon. Thank you so much for your presentation, Ms. Scon. We're very happy that you could be with us today. Thank you so much and all of your for your great work uh, that you're doing in on the continent of Africa and especially in your country, Kenya and uh, also for showcasing how uh, you could fund different initiatives. It's also very important to see that some of the government's initiatives, some of our wider network of the Women's Federation who could support. So thank you so much. Um, looking at the time, I will just continue quickly and to introduce our next speaker. Uh, we're very happy to welcome Mrs. Uh, Ms. Flevian Machoka. Um, she is here um, uh, advoc advocating for Action for Youth Development Uganda. And uh, yeah, she has a Bachelor in Environmental Planning and Management at Kenyatta University in Kenya, and is currently pursuing a Master's in Public and Cultural Diplomacy at the University of Siena in Italy. So um, she will be talking on countering the abuse of narcotic drugs and criminal activities among the youth. Thank you so much and the floor is yours. Um, thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Women Federation for World Peace for giving us this platform to be able to share the work that we are doing in the grassroots of Uganda. Uh, uh, thank you so much. And also, I'd like to acknowledge um, my colleagues in Uganda who could not make it here today. And also to acknowledge Caroline Owashaba for whose uh, shoes I'm trying to fit in here today desperately, and she could also not uh, be able to make it here today. So um, Action for Youth Development Uganda is an organization in the grassroots of Uganda in Barara. Uh, we are community driven and we are not for profit. And we are a youth advocacy uh, organization that advocates for the rights and well-being of adolescents and young people. So um, just to brief you on the current situation in Uganda, uh, we know that uh, currently Uganda has the second youngest uh, population in Africa with 78%, 78% of its citizens being below the age of 30%. And this is such a huge number that um, even as we work in this room to counter the, the, you know, prevent the use of drugs and substance abuse among young people, this is also the same number um, that the people who are not present in this room are also working towards uh, getting to, you know, re 
recruit and convince into these crime syndicates. And they're looking at these numbers from a financial perspective and for financial gains, how they can be able to tap into this uh, numbers and you know convince the young people to buy the drugs and to use the 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 to use them basically for um crime for crime activities and after the covid 19 we witnessed a shutdown of most schools and uh, this impacted a lot of economic activities where the young people were involved and especially the youth out of schools and this uh, increased the idleness among teenagers and young adults and in turn, this also increased risky behavior as young people engaged more and more in drugs as an escape from daily realities. And uh, the major challenges we are facing right now in the, our prevention efforts is that this, there's been a glorification of drugs and substance abuse among young people. And it's now looked at as a cool activity, something that is cool to do. You're, you're looked at as cool if you're engaging in drugs. And also we are seeing a lot of increased involvement of young, uh, young people in crime. And this is motivated mainly by financial gains and fueled a lot by the increased unemployment levels. And also, um, it's also important to look at some of the drugs that uh, we are encountering with our young people, uh, which includes cannabis, marijuana, or weed. And uh, there's a lot of glue sniffing and also the locally manufactured illicit brew. And uh, we've also encountered some young people uh, using heroin. Uh, so at Action Youth Development Uganda, we focus mainly on prevention efforts and reduction programs. And these are aimed at addressing the issue of drug and substance abuse amongst our young people. Uh, so we cover a uh, district in Barara, Uganda, and our target communities are mostly the rural, um, uh, the rural and peri-urban communities. We target the schools in these regions. We look at the refugee settlement communities for uh, the internally displaced people, as well as the fish landing sites where the people depend mainly on uh, fishing activities as their main economic activity. And in these areas, we, we target the students. We target their dollars and girls and young women, youth who are in school as well as the youth who are out of school and then uh, also the rural women practicing agriculture and the single mother households and here we have to really emphasize the role of the family in prevention of uh, drug and substance abuse and we have programs that support our prevention efforts including sexual reproductive health and education and all because uh, some of these issues are intertwined and uh, brings us to the reasons why uh, young people engage in drug and substance abuse. And our approach uh, involves uh, mapping and profiling young people at risk. So we look at the youth who are engaged in drugs, affected by human trafficking, and basically the youth who are more vulnerable to, um, to exploitation. And then we identify opportunities for these young people, and then we provide uh, referrals. Here we work a lot with partners, with hospitals, with rehabilitation centers for psychosocial support, uh, the local police departments, and also referring young people to schools and to mentors. And we focus also a lot on information sensitization and awareness campaigns, and here through uh, training, capacity building, and inter-community study visits in the schools. And, um, sorry. Uh, so just to take you through some of our pilot uh, programs real quick, uh, we have awareness campaigns. This was a pilot uh, program that we carried out last year. And the best part about this uh, is we were using impactful storytelling and drug-free social events, showing the young people that you can have fun without necessarily having to engage in drugs and substance abuse. And here, we just made sure that um, we engage the young people in writing short plays. And these short plays were acted by the young people and written by the young people, directed by the young people, so also encouraging uh, the young people to develop creative talent, uh, at the same time delivering the message of making good choices. And also we uh, do a lot of social media campaigns which create platform for young people. As we know, all the young people are on social media and it's good to also be able to leverage these social media platforms to do good and to spread the messages of making good choices. And then we engage the young people in creative arts and sports. And here we target the community youth and, and bring them into sports like football, netball, music and dance, and just make sure that they are kept busy and away from um, experimentation with drugs. And then we also had a pilot program on the peer, peer education program where the young people can come together and talk to each other. We identify talents and um, also some beneficiaries of our rehabilitation programs can be able to share their stories uh, through this program. 
And also currently we have ongoing campaigns where we're using projectors and films in school to educate young people on the dangers of uh, engaging in drugs and substance abuse, uh, just to provide visual and interactive learning experience for the young people in the schools. And then community collaboration programs, also partnerships and referrals for psychosocial support. And also it's important that we to note that we are also engaging uh, the youth and women in conversations of green economy projects and specifically training the women who are mothers of these young people that we are trying to keep off the drugs to train them into sustainable um, means of sustainable livelihood so that they can fend for their families and um, also speak to their young ones back home. And then also we have the life skills uh, campaigns and here we run mentorship programs and we partner a lot with positive role models. And um, as we can see the lady in the yellow turban that is Miss, uh, that is uh, Honorable Rita Atukwasa, who's a member of parliament in Barara district and she supports a lot of our programs. And also as we do this, we face a lot of challenges in terms of limited resources and um, which hinder our ability to expand our programs and reach more young people as we rely mainly on volunteers. And then also uh, we welcome more partnerships with organizations, with the governments and also individuals who share our vision and values. Uh, having said this, we have had achievements where we've been able to shift the school focus to look beyond academics and also introduce students in advocacy for social change. And then uh, we've successfully engaged young people in different programs and um, to participate in climate uh, justice. We promoted sustainable livelihoods and we've successfully reached about 14 schools in different districts. Uh, so just to give you a few recommendations from our end and what we are uh, noticing from the ground is that the issues facing the young people are interconnected. So when we tackle them, we have to have a holistic approach. There's no one shoe fits all situation for this. And it's not only enough to show young people that they can make better choices. It's also necessary to empower them with the knowledge and skills to advocate for social issues. Yes. And, also yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and also look at why young people are engaging in drugs because the reasons are many. Uh, could be psychological distress, experimentation, and economic disempowerment, and be able to um, tackle this issue from that perspective as well. And this is our um, Women Achievers Awards that we launched, and we are awarding the young volunteers just to give them motivation to carry on the, the spirit. And this is uh, actually, this happened yesterday. And uh, this is also another program that we are having for the youth out of schools, just to engage them in these social conversations. Uh, so thank you so much. And please uh, feel free to reach out to us and we value partnerships a lot. And uh, let's see how we can work together in this uh, journey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Machoka, for your contribution and all the work you've been doing together with the organization. And thank you for the colleagues. Uh, still in Uganda, so thank you so much. Um, very sorry, we're running out of time. So um, if anyone needs to leave, we would understand. <laughs> but uh, we will continue. We have two uh, great other speakers. Um, so we're very happy to welcome them as well. And um, we also want to acknowledge um, the presence of the, of, the, of the government of Uganda here. Um, Mr. S Mr. Sekayovia, thank you so much for joining. Would you like to say a few words on behalf of your country? Okay, thank you so much. I'm uh, glad to be at this session. And uh, just in one minute, I should say, I'm glad to hear that we are putting the youth at the forefront of all the work we are doing. And as, um, as an institution, a government-led institution that is responsible for drugs in the country, we've also taken in a leap of faith on the youth and we are engaging them in so many ways. One, physically, guiding them on uh, prevention of drug and substance abuse. Two, supporting financially and technically their led institutions to manage drug and substance abuse within the country. Something that we are enthusiastically doing and, uh, and uh, we, picked, we picked this energy and I can see a lot of investment going towards these efforts. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here as well, Mr. Sekayomke. Thank you for your words. So we will um, go back to Vienna uh, and we would like to welcome uh, Peter Deininger. He's a representative of uh, the International Association of Youth and Students for Peace, one of our younger brother organizations, I would say. And uh, he himself is studying renewable energy in Vienna 
and uh, he will give a presentation on uh, the Peace Designer Program to involve young people in community development. Thank you, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I am Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm deeply honored to be able to speak in front of you today. Uh, I'm 23 years old. Um, I somewhat identify still with the youth myself. Uh, so in, on behalf of the youth, thank you very much for being here in this event and really uh, investing uh, for the youth. I also want to especially thank uh, Excellency Ms. Mary Mupanya uh, for supporting us with this event. <clears throat> um, so yeah, my name is Peter Deininger. Um, uh, as, and as a committee member of um, the International Association uh, of Youth and Students for Peace in Austria, uh, I want to exp I want to um, yeah, really express uh, my gratitude for this opportunity to represent um, the voices of young people in the highly important topic of um, encouraging young people in community development. Um, <clears throat> allow me to shortly introduce, shortly introduce IOSP and our work. Um, IOSP is an organization um, by young people for young people. We have a presence in over 60 countries globally. Um, our mission is to advance world peace by empowering youth and students to become global citizens uh, through education for personal development and peace projects supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, <clears throat> we promote the core values of responsibility, integrity, service, um, and empathy among young people throughout our programs um, because we believe these are key. Uh, to a healthy lifestyle for individuals, as well as creating a sustainable societies. Um, the practice of these values is strongly inherent in our flagship activity, the Peace Designer Program, as we've announced. Uh, the training helps young people identify societal problems around them. And instead of finding someone to blame for the problem, young people are encouraged uh, to find creative solutions for the, for the problems. The results are new projects where young people are um, encouraged to take ownership of the issues of the, in the surroundings. Um, solving these issues uh, will be able to create a more livable community one step at a time. <clears throat> we then try to support the projects with coaching through our networks of experts and competitions like the Synergy event. The main benefits of this project, however, is that our youth are fostering a positive, constructive attitude towards the surrounding society and see themselves as an essential part of it. In addition, this positive attitude might even affect youth crime uh, and or youth drug abuse. As Viktor Frankl said, I also really like quotes, when a person can't find a deep sense of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure, end of quote. The capacity to do something for others helps people to change their perspective and reassess their own situation. We believe that this change in perspective has the potential to help people who are in danger of addiction or committing crime. Through the practical implementation of a positive change by their own hands, they might find the courage to change difficult aspects of their own life. Now, how can you encourage people to do something for the community? What people need help with is not necessarily knowledge alone, we found, but more importantly, concrete encouragement to action, knowledge plus action as I call it, and I feel the peace designer provides exactly that, practical encouragement. Because we don't ask people to do something for us, uh, but much more, we ask them what they want to change for them. <laughs> I would like to share some examples of real projects that young people have carried out following their participation to the peace designer training. <clears throat> In Prague, the Czech Republic, young people wanted to do something about the problem of homelessness. Not having great resources available, um, they went door to door collecting food and clothes. Uh, while distributing these to the homeless people, they also asked each homeless person they met to share their story. Um, some of these people they met had lived on the streets for 14 years, but had never been asked this question. Um, they, uh, these, tear, uh, these encounters were often tearful and uh, filled with humanity towards those who rarely experience it and were unforgettable life lessons for the youth. Another inspiring project arose from an online peace designer training organized by IOSP Switzerland in the middle of the COVID lockdown to tackle the mental health challenges young people were facing because of the extended lockdown. 
The project offered them free online sessions with certified life coaches, providing the participating youth with tools and tips for holistic well-being at such challenging and isolated times. Due to the positive impact the peace designer training has had on young people, IOSP has been increasingly invited to conduct this training for high school students so that they can have a change in perspective. For example, in Israel, following a peace designer training initiated by a high school student council, the students spend an afternoon planting the yard and empty spaces around the school with hundreds of flowers. As a result, the school became more beautiful and pleasant to attend, not just for themselves, but for the entire school community. Through this, the students could practically experience how the power to improve their community lies in their own hands. We want to emphasize that anyone, including those who struggle with addiction, need a community. Uh, when young people see someone in their direct surroundings who are interested in making a positive change, they are inspired to do something together and change themselves. One more minute. A good community, thank you. A good community can inspire people to invest for the sake of other people by giving them the support and motivation they need. In the previous speeches, we've seen how the abuse of narcotic drugs and other criminal activities can undermine the social fabric, the economic potential and the human rights of young people and their communities. We have also seen how young people can be agents of positive change, peace and security when they are allowed to participate in community development and entrepreneurship. Community development and entrepreneurship are not only ways to foster social cohesion and improve the quality of life, but also a way to foster civic engagement. They can also help young people to develop skills, confidence and resilience, which will help them overcome challenges they face in their daily lives. We believe the peace designer training can offer significant contributions to the youth peace and security agenda of the United Nations and has the potential to be a stepping stone for other organizations that recognize the value of a, of a powerful youth for world peace, some of which we've heard of from today. I urge you to support the initiatives and programs that aim to empower, to empower young people to become community entrepreneurs and peace builders. Let us work together to build strong communities that inspire individuals to invest in them and make a positive difference. By investing in the potential and creativity of young people, we can create a more peaceful, prosperous and sustainable world for all. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much, Peter. We're very happy and honored that we actually have a young person. And I think the Mrs. Machoka is also still a young person. So uh, and thanks for your contribution. And we're very happy to um, learn about the Peace Designer Program of the YSP. Uh, and also very beautiful to see that also here in Vienna, um, you're investing in um, uh, encouraging the young people um, to um, to invest in community development because of in every place and everywhere it's important to invest in this. So thank you so much. Um, and then I would uh, I thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, we are over time. Hmm? Yes, I know. I will not forget the doctor. Of course not. <laughs> and I just wanted to introduce the last speaker of today, also based in Vienna. Uh, Mr. D uh, Dr. Wolfgang Beigelbuck, um, and he is um, from the Anton Proksch Institute and also the uh, from the International Association of Applied Psychology, the representative of this organization to the UN in Vienna. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Beigelbuck, thank you so much for being here, and you will be sharing on uh, if people uh, are on drugs, how uh, treatment and rehabilitation for young persons uh, work here in Austria. Mr. Uh, Beigelbock, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. First of all, please accept my apologies that I'm wearing a mask, but as you've heard, I'm working in the hospital and I've been in contact with two positive tested colleagues and patients yesterday. So I'm not afraid of you. You should be afraid of me a little bit. <laughs> so <clears throat> please accept my apologies. As already mentioned, I, I'm focusing not on strengthening the resilience of young people. I'm working uh, to strengthen them fighting against their drug abuse. Uh, so I have prepared a short pre uh, presentation to this, but as we are already over time, I will shorten them more uh, and skip through a few uh, slides. If you are interested in the presentation, I'm very happy to share them with you. Just give me your email contact. Uh, I just wanted to start with a few 
data on preval prevalence of in, in Austria. This is about THC cannabis. You see that it hasn't changed very much during the last 20 years. Um, also, the, the use of stimulants hasn't changed very much among young people. These are people up, up to for between 15 and 18 years, but it has dramatically increased among the whole in the whole population. This is a representative sample. So the problem seems to be that don't that the young people still try amphetamines, but in former days they have skipped them when they're getting older, but nowadays they stick to them uh, more. So you see here it is incredibly doubled and tripled. Uh, just if you were to new uh, psychoactive novel psychoactive substances, the prevalence in the total population is about one percent among the young people is of course higher, but they don't stick to them when they are getting older. This, just one more slide on the on data. This is very interesting, as you see that uh, the 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 prevalence of young people between fifteen and twenty four uh, has dramatically decreased during the last twenty years. Uh, those who using who, those who have a risky drug use, including opiates, also among the people uh, on, on those between 25 and 34. But the people on 35 plus have increased. Uh, this might be due to the fact that uh, HIV and hepatitis C can be treated very successfully nowadays. So drug addicts getting older. And the other uh, point why because why we think that the people that the treatment is that the numbers of them is decreasing is that we have an in treatment rate of about 50 percent of uh, uh, those who use opioids in Austria um, just a few words to our treatment program what we are doing uh, we have a, we call it a treatment chain because we are caring for the patients also in, in and outpatient units and at law, what's located in central Vienna and the district municipalities. And there is a pre-care then followed by inpatient detoxification, followed by short-term or and or long-term therapy up to nine months. Uh, assisted housing in assisted living communities. We are uh, cooperating with social economic projects and uh, recreational clubs where they can go after their dismissal from the ward. And there is an outpatient aftercare in different intensities up to many years. Uh, the, uh, just the outpatient unit, just to give you an idea what you're doing, that this is the duration is until the admission to the inpatient unit. It is uh, focuses on individual psychosocial counseling, group supportive counseling, psychiatric assessment, and starting the treatment and social therapeutic counseling. When they are coming to the detox unit, the detox unit, uh, they, they stay at the partial detoxification, by the way, means uh, we have a lot of people who are on substitution treatment, but are using alcohol or other medications, which has to be detox for where they need detoxification treatment. The goals is the preparation for further short and long term inpatient treatment and the preparation for an outpatient treatment if they don't decide to go to uh, the long time ward. Uh, this is just to give you an idea how it looks like. We have a rather new building. Uh, I will skip a bit. Uh, what what this for, what this slide would like to, with this slide I would like to show you that we are not caring about the drug addiction alone, but also about their psychiatric disorders underlying the 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 drug addiction. This is I will skip that a bit. You see, this is just what we are doing there. Uh, the but at the end of my presentation, I will just introduce a very new uh, a new project we are going to have in a few weeks. This is a, it's called Steps, a transitional psychiatry ward for persons who use drugs in the age up from age 20, uh, 16 to 25. Uh, why did we do that? There was a treatment gap for those in, in this age range. They were sent to pediatric, pediatric psychiatry adult, adult wards. Pediatric psychiatrists, uh, let's say, weren't having very much expertise in drug, treating drug addiction, and uh, adult wards weren't suitable for young people, for especially for 16 year olds. There were no financial means for this group up to now, but the city of Vienna provides now financial means starting from this year to organize such a uh, 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 ward. Uh, how do we do it? It's based on the concept just reported, but it is additionally based on the needs of this age group with more flexibility, more individual therapy, 
uh, more age-appropriate and developmentally appropriate therapeutic measures which are, with a heavy focus on pedagogic and social pedagogics. So therefore, the staff is child and adolescent psychiatrists, clinical, child and adolescent clinical psychologists and psychotherapists, social worker, uh, social pedagogues, nurses. Uh, this, it will be a separate ward with about 10 to 12 beds and a day clinic, aftercare patient, aftercare day clinic for four to six patients. And which is very unique in, in, in Austria is that from pre-treatment to treatment and outpatient follow-up, the patients will all cared up for by the same by psychiatrists, psychologists, and social worker. Uh, and there will be a close cooperation, of course, with all institutions of child and youth care and other transitory institutions. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Beigelbuck, uh, for all of the, the work you're doing at the Anton Prox Institute and uh, for highlighting the new program that you're launching for our youth group. So it's very great that the city of Vienna is um, yeah. financing this. Yeah, because grateful. also <laughs> here we need uh, finance. So um, we're very happy that you could all bear with us until the end. We were aware that we would not be kicked out of this room. <laughs> so we're very happy that um, we had this time. Um, we're coming to a close of our uh, session. I do also want to acknowledge the presence of the Principal Administrative Secretary, Ministry of Defense, Mrs. Anne Negatich. I don't know if I know, uh, pronounce the name well. Thank you so much for your presence. Of the Kenyan government. And um, yeah, we're already over time. I don't know if somebody has a very urgent question for one of the speakers. Maybe we could take one or two, and then uh, we will also have uh, some coffee and snacks uh, outside of the room so we can, anyways, talk and further discuss more outside. So, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to. Thanks very much, the panelists. Uh, my name is uh, Mama Dukone, um, <clears throat> the Honorary Council of Mali uh, to Austria here, and also uh, a consultant in the international development. Uh, I, I think uh, what we hear now, uh, there is a convergence of uh, the ideas, and the focus point is uh, skill development. This is what we need in Africa. Uh, what we need is now a transfer of knowledge so that local people can implement those knowledge for themselves, by themselves and for themselves. And this is what is sustainable. It addresses the roots of the problem you have underlined here, which are migration or immigration or drug abuse. As long as you gave the skills to people train them, uh, they can by themselves focus on their own problem. I think uh, Ms. Uh, Ambassador has underlined it very properly in the case of uh, 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 her country and uh, uh, in Uganda also it is the same. But we have to go beyond theoretical discourse and try to involve the young people in their own development by giving them the required skill, which is knowledge. We all know the knowledge is power. As long as you have empowered people with knowledge in training them in vocational training and awareness sessions against drug abuse, I think they will be uh, more active. Again, thank you for your uh, different contribution. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your intervention. And uh, yes, um, we need that's the main focus to um, uh, encourage the youth uh, to develop their talents, to discover their talents, their life skills, and to train them. But as mentioned also before by the grassroots projects that there's always funding needed as well to uh, facilitate these things. So we really hope to partner uh, with different NGOs, but with the governments and um, perhaps with UNODC as well, uh, to make this possible step-by-step. Step. Thank you so much. Any other urgent questions? Yes, maybe adding into that, um, maybe I'll speak to Ambassador Mary. I think we need, as a region, 
to push further involvement of the youth in some of these aspects. Mm -hmm. So at your level and then with your counterparts in the region, we, I would request that we don't leave this to the civil society alone. As governments, we need to come in strong and see how far we can lead this and how far it can go. Because as government, we can streamline and then synergize the civil society and then get better results. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Seka Yombia. Beautiful name. So um, uh, before I give the final words to the UNODC representative, I would like to thank also all the people online which I do not see, but thank you so much, Mrs. Susan Kona, for your contribution, and also the colleagues um, of um, Action Youth Development Uganda. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for being present and for all your hard work. And um, then I would like to give the final uh, comment to uh, Mr. Billy. Thank you so much, ma'am, for, for um really helping us to go through this very important event uh, congratulations for the work that you've done as a moderator um i just really wanted to appreciate everyone's presence and everyone's contribution because i think for us as un as united nations it's not easy to do the work without uh the grassroots organizations that are in the communities and and, and telling us what is happening in the communities and bringing that evidence and pushing us to push member states and of course, we cannot do without the member states. And here, ma'am, I'm looking at you because I know you are also the chair of the CCPCJ. We have the event coming up in May, and uh, it's going to be very important to continue providing this space for uh, the engagement of young people. I think we talk about space, we talk about um, empowerment, we talk about funding, of course, um, and we have seen significant changes when governments open these spaces and especially in a position of a chair uh, you have quite a lot of power i know that um and so and and, and through you uh, madam ambassador i really would like also to appreciate the role of the african union because i know that from the from the conversations we've been, we've been having with them there are a concerted effort to establish a channel uh, of communication with civil society at the african union level that is very important uh, we wish to see this in many other regions, and we hope that this is going to materialize in Africa, and I think this will serve as a good model. And within that mechanism, I'm hoping that we'll have a very strong youth component in that, and I think from our conversation, that is also going to be the case. So I want to thank everyone. I think I want to thank you, especially Ambassador, and of course, especially the organizers, and really um, appreciate the work that you do, because we cannot do without your work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And please join us for uh, some coffee and snacks outside so we can further uh, our discussions. And thank you all for coming and sticking to, till the end. Thank you so much. Thank you for online. Thank you.